the Great War through a London child's eye. November 25th, 1914. Mother has a job. She has begun as something called a censor for the war office. Frightfully important work, although she won't give me the slightest clue about what she gets up to. Infuriating. Every day she sets off on her new bicycle. See you later, darling. Bye, Mother. In fact, she's hardly at home these days. What with working, helping at the church after that, and delivering food to the poor. Now the shops are even more empty. Thank goodness Mrs. Parry is still here, or I might have to fend for myself. So what do all the senses do, Mrs. Parry? Mother will tell me nothing. I only know it's something to do with the post we send to the soldiers and what they send back. Well, they make sure there's nothing in the letters that might give the game away to the Bosch. Letters can fall into the wrong hands, and the last thing we want is them knowing our plans. So Mother must know an awful lot about what is going on at the front. How I wish she'd tell me. It would be so exciting. Don't be so sure, Edward, dear. So many have died. It's not the kind of excitement you want in tall order. Well, you must get exciting letters from the front. Mr. Parry and John are both in France, aren't they? I'm sorry. It's rude of me to ask. Oh, it's nice that you want to know. Although I can't tell you much. Don't they write? Well, yes. And no. You see, Mr. Parry sends me field service postcards. He's never been one for writing, but the postcard makes it easy as pie. It has different sentences saying, I received your letter. I am quite well. I am wounded, and so forth. And Mr. Parry just crosses out the parts which don't apply. I suppose he's too busy to write long letters. What about John? Oh, he sends wonderful letters. But, oh, you should see the state they're in after what the censors do to them. Oh, John. You can see one for yourself. I have one here. Dear Mother, we blank, blank, blank. It was ever so exciting when blank, because we are moving blank. Blank and blank says that blank, blank, blank might happen. I want to tell you that blank, blank, but you mustn't worry. Peter Harris told a very funny joke that made us laugh, and we shared a top-notch pie out of his parcel for tea. I'm in the pink, dear Mother. You must not worry, but please send one of your smashing veal pies too, if you are able. You see, that's what put me in mind of some baking, Edward. Everyone loves my veal pies. Mmm, I see what you mean, though. Not much about the war itself. Oh, yes. Rather more about what he's putting in his stomach than what he's dishing up to Fritz. You can see he's trying to tell me where they are and how he is feeling. Downhearted a little, I think. My mother knows these things, even when you can't read the words. But the army want us to think they're happy as pigs in the mud out there, I reckon. So, is that what Mother is doing? Putting black lines over all the letters to hide all the interesting parts? I expect so. But it'll be on the honour envelopes. That's where soldiers are allowed to say what they're like and they're censored back at home. They end up in the same state regardless. Oh, look, they said He must have finished for the day. Such a good boy. Come to walk his mother home. More like Sydney came to get a slice of veal pie. Good old Sydney. We used to talk all the time, but since he became a telegram boy, I hardly see him. I went outside to catch up with all the news while Mrs. Parry finished her work. Sydney, how smart you look. Who's the spiv now? <laughs> <laughs> well, if the British Army don't want me, this uniform will do for now. I tell you, they drew you like the Army anyway. I have to keep my boots polished and my cycle spick and span. Although, I get six pence for that, alone, every single day. Sounds cushy. Hey, you're the one with the cushy life, pal. I ride in this bike all day long, delivering tons and tons of telegrams. I tell you what, no one likes seeing my cheerful face when I arrive. I suppose it's because the telegrams are mostly, well, bad news. Telling them someone has died, right? That's right. Still, a piece of cake. Talking of which, can I smell pie, old man? Hmm. Such a coincidence, you dropping in the very day your mother sets the baking pies, don't you think? Well, with your father away, I'd hate to think of there being all this pie left untasted. Would be a criminal waste. Seems like everyone's got more of a bite of the war than me. Father, mother, John and Mr Parry, even Sydney. I suppose I'm the lucky one, really. 
The Great War through a London child's eye. Supported by the National Lottery through the Heritage Lottery Fund.